Okay, so what is uh, financial return? Well, financial return is uh, we can we can calculate a financial return uh, in in two ways. So uh, basically, uh, the return that you receive by holding uh, a stock uh, over a period of time is known as financial return, and uh, there is a, a mathematical way of uh, computing uh, financial returns. There are two ways of compute, uh, computing returns. Uh, one is uh, a simple return, uh, and the other one is a continuous return or continuously compounded, compo compounded uh, returns. Okay. So uh, the simple returns can be uh, computed uh, like this. So uh, let's say we want to compute return uh, at time period t, at time period t. So we have price at time period t and we have price at time t minus 1. That means one period less than the current time period, right? So this is t minus 1 time period. So price at time period t uh, minus price at time period t minus 1 uh, upon uh, price at time period t minus 1, right? So what the change in price uh, whole divided by the price in the previous period and then we multiply with 100% to get the return percentage. So that's the simple returns. So how do we uh, compute the uh, continuous return? Well, continuous return is simply the logarithm of the ratio of current price to the previous price, or current period price to the previous period price. So it's the logarithm of that ratio. And then when we uh, multiply that with 100%, we get the continuous, uh, continuously compounded return percentage. The question is, how do we, uh, how do we compute the return on a portfolio? Say you have, you know, number of stocks or bonds uh, in a portfolio. So how do you compute returns? So if it is, you want to compute using a simple uh, return formula. What you can do is that the uh, the net return on a portfolio is, is is nothing but the summation of individual return uh, and the corresponding weight. So it's it's a sum product of the weight. That means the number of stocks for a particular uh, type of uh, uh, number of stocks uh, in the portfolio and the corresponding return on that portfolio. And when you do the sum product of that. You, uh, you know multiply that and you take this sum of that you'll get the overall the overall return percentage uh, on the portfolio now this formula will not apply for the uh, the continuous one but the continuous one it's not the same because there is logarithm that means uh, you know if there is no logarithm then you can actually uh, simply you can add it up but when there is logarithm that means um, log of x plus y is not is not log of x plus log of y so for that you need to first compute uh, the the uh, return and then take the logarithm of that so um, that is uh, totally different so you can simply extend that formula using the uh, logarithm so i leave that uh, you know derivation of that formula to to your viewers to the viewers and you can try it out yourself and and th this uh, the the continuous return on a portfolio is just an extension of uh, what i explained over here just that we need to incorporate this logarithm uh, in in this Normally, uh, dividend uh, on the uh, stock uh, or the bond is is not included uh, while computing the return, right? Which is which is not a good thing. Uh, but uh, there is a way to include that. But for simplicity purpose, most of the times in financial research, dividend is not included. Um, and one of the good thing why people uh, you know love to work with returns instead of stock price. Um, is that return is unit free, right? Because there is price in the numerator and then price in the denominator. That means uh, the price unit both cancels out and return is unitless, right? Hence, people love to work with uh, an unitless, uh, you know, uh, series instead of an unit uh, series with units. 
right that's why return is mostly used in financial uh, research uh, not not the price um so time series analysis in particular uh, is actually done uh, or any econometric model for that matter uh, is done using financial uh, using the uh, um, return on you know um, stock price uh, stock or a bond so the, uh, normally return is preferred over the stock price or a uh, bond price um, it is easier to uh, handle return uh, and it's also uh, unitless right because uh, you know if you uh, take number of uh, types of stocks or bonds trading at different uh, you know stock exchange there will be different units like you know uh, one will be in, in rupee uh, the other one will be in dollar uh, and then you know something who is going to be in euro and so it's going to create problem while comparing you know the uh, different series so it's always good to take return because return is totally unitless and there is no problem with the currency factor so that's how uh, financial return is actually computed in in different ways and um, and that that's the importance of financial return um, in different uh, types of uh, financial uh, research